Okay, are we rolling? Okay, hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Instead of saying good afternoon, I said good morning. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome to IAN's online free learning session. Okay, how are you today? Well, I hope everyone is doing great. Uh, okay, can I see how many participants we have today? Can we see how many? Uh, I think we have. Uh, some okay, let, but let's just say we have Dian Perdana and Justicia, Justiciana Susilat Maja. Okay, hello, Dian Perdana. Can you hear me? Can you turn on your mic? Hello, Dian. What about Justiciana? Justiciana Susilat Maja. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Okay, no response. Okay, if there's no response, we'll then we'll carry on, okay? Right. Okay, right. So today we're going to talk about some events that have happened, okay? Right, okay, I want to share something. Uh, please wait. Okay, right. Okay, so today we're going to talk to talk about world culture, okay, and also flashbulb memories. Okay, but before we move on, I want to ask something about flashbulb memories. Okay, Dian, uh, can I see Dian's chat, Mas? Dian's? Dian. 
Oh, oke, okay, Dian. Oke, okay, Dian, uh, can you talk to me for, uh, from the chat? Dian, can you respond to my questions via the chat? I can. Good. Oke, okay, Dian. Uh, where are you come from, Dian? Oke, okay, Dian, where are you come from? Oh, I'm from Jogja. Oke, okay, uh, what do you do? Are you a university students or are you a high school students? Or are you an employee or something? Dian? Are you students, a high school students, a university students, or perhaps a professional? What are you, Dian? Oke, okay, no response. Oke. Okay. What about you use this year? Oke, okay, I'm a graduate from university. Oh, oke. Okay. So you are a fresh graduate. Oke. Okay. Where where did you uh which university did you go to? Yeah, which university did you go to? Oke. Okay. UGM. Uh, what did you study? So Dian uh, is a graduate from Universitas Gajah Mada. So what did you study, Dian? Mechanical engineering. Oh, okay. Uh, by the way, Dian, uh, are you a boy or a girl? Are you a man or a woman? Just to make sure that I'm using the correct pronoun. Yeah, hello? Dian? Oh, I'm a man. Okay, Dian. Thank you. So, Dian is a um, student, uh, not student, is a graduate from Universitas Gajah Mada, Mechanical Engineering, and he is here to learn English with us. Okay, Dian, before we talk about flashback memories any further, okay, so when, when you hear the word, the word flashback memories, what do you think? What do you think that when you hear the word the term flashbulb memories. What do you think? Uh, does it remind you about something? Flashbulb memories, anyone? No? Okay. So uh, flashbulb memories is the kind of memories that suddenly came up, come up to your mind when you, uh, when you are triggered by something for example when i okay for example when i talk about covid okay and suddenly you are reminded uh, with the days when you were isolated in your home for contracting covid okay that's flashback memories okay? another memories memories is when you um saw uh Or when you uh, when you go to a, a restaurant and then you are reminded with your and suddenly you are reminded with your ex girlfriend along the along with the memories that you have spent with your girlfriend friend in that place. Okay, that's what we call as flashback memories. Okay, so mem flashback memories is basically um, a memories that is triggered uh, by something you see or you listen to in real life. Okay. That's how flashback memories work. Okay, in your case, Dian, uh, what triggers flashback memories in your in your uh, in your experience? Okay, what triggers flashback memories? Can you tell me, Dian? What triggers flashback memories? Dian? Uh, maybe maybe what 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 triggers Flashbulb memories. What triggers your flashbulb memories? What is it? Earthquake. Oh, okay. Um, what does an earthquake remind you of? Okay, what does an earthquake remind you of? Can you tell me? So Dian said that he has a flashbulb memories with an earthquake. So when an earthquake happens, uh, what will you what will you remember? Okay, what does an earthquake remind you of? What is it yet? Come on, share your stories.
Okay, Dian, I'm waiting for your answer because anyone, everyone else is watching. Okay. okay, what does an earthquake remind you of? Okay, what does an earthquake remind you of? When an earthquake happens, what do you remember? What do you suddenly remember? Can you tell us, Dian? Mm, don't think Dian is responding, so let's just carry on. Okay, right. Uh, okay, Dian as, uh, and everyone else, as you can see, uh, we can go straight to part two here. Part two A, right. So in this part, okay, we're going to watch about a memories. We're going to watch a video about memories of important events. Before we watch, I want you to, ma to match the words and phrases in A with their meaning in B, okay? Dian and everyone else who is watching, I want us to match the terms in part A with its meaning in part B. Okay, let's start from the first one, psychologist, okay? Dian, can you tell me what is the definition or the meaning of a psychologist? You can find in the answer in part B. Okay, what is psychologist, Dian? What is psychologist? Hello, Dian? No response, okay. So what is psychologist? Psychologist, so let's just say that psychology is the field that studies the mind, the human mind, okay. If the psychology, the field of psychology studies the human mind, then psychologist is the person who practice that knowledge. That means psychologist is, right, psychologist is, psychologist is someone who studies the human mind, okay? So the answer is D. Oh, I need to. Right, next one, number two, striking. Okay, what is striking? Striking, okay, it has nothing to do with football. It has nothing to do with Cristiano Ronaldo, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the context of attacking something. It's striking in another way okay striking can you can someone tell me what striking means like striking memories striking striking memories if i talk about if i say i have striking memories about this place then what does that mean what does striking mean I have a striking memories about this place. Okay, can someone tell? Right, if I say that I have a striking memories about some place, that means the memory is very strong. If the memory is very strong, then the answer is? The answer is? Yes, the answer is E. Striking. Right, good. Okay, I think we have new participants. Catur, is that you? Okay, right. Uh, do we have any other participants? No. Okay. Okay, Dian. Uh, Dian is here. Good. Okay, Dian, let's do number three. Vivid. What is vivid? For example, I have vivid imagination or I have vivid memory about this place. What is What does vivid mean? My memory about our relationship is very vivid. Okay, vivid. Make strong, clear image in the mind. Yes, very good. So vivid means F. Okay, so uh, you can use the, the term vivid not only to describe your uh, memories, but you can also use the word to describe your imaginations. Or vision. Suddenly you can imagine, you can see that something that will happen in the future okay and then your vision is so vivid 
That's it. That's how you how you use it. Okay. Vivid, vivid imagination, vivid vision. Okay. If you are imagining thing or you can seeing things and it is very clear only to your mind, that means it is very vivid. Okay. Next one. Amygdala. Okay. Amygdala. Okay. Anyone? I want you to find the word amygdala on Google. So look it up. Find out what amygdala is. Okay, what is amygdala? B, yes, amygdala is B, part of the brain. Very good. Number five, lay down a memory. Okay, what is lay down a memory? Lay down a memory. What is it? Lay down new memory. Can someone, for example, um, lay down new memory. I want to lay down new memory after I after I broke up with her. Okay, that's lay down. Okay, I want to lay down new memory after I broke up with her. What is what does lay down mean? Yan, can you help me with this one? G makes new memory. Yes, lay down means making new ones, making new memory by forgetting the old ones. That means it is G. Good. Okay. D G. Okay, we have number six. Idiosyncratic. Okay, is it A or C? Idiosyncratic. Idiosyncratic. Is it A or B? Dian? C, yes. Good. That means the word recalls is A. Good. Okay. Now, um, Dian, get ready. And anyone else who, who anyone else who are watching, I'm going to play a video. Okay, so pay attention. Because this video is going to be very important. Okay. Dian, are you ready for the video? Are you ready for the video, Dian? I'm ready. Good. Here you go. Where is the... Oh, yeah. oh yes. Wait a minute. Um... Okay, wait a minute. Um, sebentar. Oh. Okay, wait a minute, guys. Okay, I'll be right back. Please wait. Okay. Okay, get ready. Here I come. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I've got a clear memory of when uh, Whitney Houston died. Because the funny thing was, was that I was listening to Whitney Houston the day before, which I never do. Um, and my girlfriend and I were listening to Whitney Houston and saying, actually, she's quite good. And then the next day I uh, went to the news agents and it was on the front of all the newspapers that she died. And it was really surprising in a strange coincidence that, that um, we'd listened to it the day before. One of the major events in German history was probably the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 on the 9th of November. Over the summer 89, uh, people 
started uh, demonstrating in Eastern Germany and Eastern Europe. And then uh, on the 9th of November, one of the, there was a press conference and one of the major politicians of the GDR said that um, the borders to Western uh, West Berlin and Western um, Germany would um, be open. And uh, one of the journalists asked, okay, when? Would that happen? Um, and this um, politician said uh, he hesitated, looked at his notes, and then uh, he said, "Oh, today." People heard this on the news and went to the checkpoints, and the borders were still closed. But then eventually, the border officials opened them. And uh, a year later, uh, the uh, two Germanys uh, um, unified and. As a, a little girl, I took this very seriously and crossed out all the borders in my school atlas. Something I remember very well was when the ash cloud caused um, air traffic chaos in Europe and people couldn't travel. And I was one of them. And um, it meant that I couldn't attend a conference, which potentially could have caused uh, big problems. And um, I was able to attend by webinar online and it actually went down very well. Okay, right, that's it. So, um, Dian, did you get that? Dian, did you get that? Okay, the end. Hello. Yes. Did you uh, did you get it? Did you did you get everything you watch? Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Now let's try to answer the questions in part three. Okay. Yeah. First question: What are the characteristics of flashbulb memory? Okay, what is, what is the answer, Dian? What are the characteristics of flashbulb memories? Uh, can anyone answer? The characteristic of flashbulb memories? You can, you can uh, to answer this question, you can also use the word from part 2A. Okay, okay Dian, can you, can you type in your answer in the chat? What are the characteristics of a flashbulb memory? What is it? What are the characteristics of a flashbulb memory? Can anyone answer? What are the characteristics of a flashbulb memory? Bien, can you hear me? Okay. Oh, you don't get the video. Okay. Do you want to watch the video one more time? The end? Do you want to watch the video one more time? The end, hello? Please. Okay. Let's watch the video one more time. One, two, three. I've got a clear memory of when uh, Whitney Houston died because the funny thing was, was that I was listening to Whitney Houston the day before, which I never do. Um, and my girlfriend and I were listening to Whitney Houston and saying, actually, she's quite good. And then the next day, I uh, went to the news agents, and it was on the front of all the newspapers that she died. And it was really surprising in a strange coincidence that, that um, we'd listened to it the day before. One of the major events in German history was probably the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 on the 9th of November. Over the summer '89, uh, people started uh, demonstrating in Eastern Germany and Eastern Europe. And then uh, on the 9th of November, one of the, there was a press conference and one of the major politicians 
of the GDR said that um, the borders to Western uh, West Berlin and Western um, Germany would um, be open. And uh, one of the journalists asked, okay, when would that happen? Um, and this um, politician said uh, he hesitated, looked at his notes, and then uh, he said, oh, today. People heard this on the news and went to the checkpoints and the borders were still closed, but then eventually the border officials opened them. And uh, a year later, uh, the uh, two Germanys uh, got um, unified. And as a, a little girl, I took this very seriously and crossed out all the borders in my school atlas. Something I remember very well was when the ash cloud caused um, air traffic chaos in Europe and people couldn't travel. And I was one of them. And um, it meant that I couldn't attend a conference, which potentially could have caused uh, big problems. And um, I was able to attend by webinar online and it actually went down very well. Okay, Diana, are you still here? We're going to watch one more video. Okay. We're going to watch one more video. Uh, video uh, about the detail of flashbulb memories. Okay. So please stay tuned. Okay, here we go. There is a particular type of memory, which psychologists call a flashbulb memory. Its characteristics are you can remember exactly where you were and what you were doing when you got a particular bit of public news. I can remember when Kennedy was assassinated. When John Lennon was shot. Princess Diana had been killed in a car crash. It's clear there are some events which are so striking that we lay down vivid memories that remain for years afterwards. So what's happening? Most of us have flashbulb memories, but just what is it that sears them so strongly onto the brain? One view is that it's involvement of the amygdala, the part of the brain dealing with emotion, which makes the experience more memorable. It may also be that because we tell the story of how we heard the news over and over again, that helps lay it down in our memory. Flashbulb memories are memories that uh, interlock our personal history with the history of our times. I do have a strong flashbulb memory of when the Berlin Wall came down. Um, I was a student at university and uh, I was in a student flat with some friends and we were watching it on the television. People tend to have relatively few flashbulb memories. Uh, but the ones they do have are very vivid, they usually contain information about who, what, where and when, and they usually contain some idiosyncratic details as well. So, for example, I recall an account of someone learning of the assassination of the American president, John F. Kennedy, and at the same time recalling the feel of a new rubber-soled pair of shoes he was wearing for the first time that day. Flashbulb memories are almost always linked to highly emotionally charged events. Buckingham Palace has confirmed the death of Diana, Princess of Wales. The princess died following a car crash in Paris. Why is it often death? Why is death so important? I think deaths are important, particularly public deaths and unexpected public deaths, because they bring to an end important cultural themes. The death of Jimi Hendrix is a turning point in the kind of hippie rock culture. The death of John Lennon, you know, maybe a turning point in losing touch with the Beatles and all they'd meant to people. 
we will only ever have a few flashbulb memories, but the shared experience seems to be so important that our brains will lovingly preserve them for the rest of our lives. Okay, right. Okay, Dian, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, uh, Dian and everyone else who are watching. Okay. So we're going to answer the question here one by one, okay? Right. So number one, what are the characteristics of flashbulb memories? Okay. What are the characteristics of flashbulb memories, Dian? Can you tell me? What are the characteristics of a flashbulb memory? Hello? Dian? Okay, so the, the characteristics of a flashbulb memory is that it is vivid and idiosyncratic. Yeah, yes, like capturing moment perfectly. Okay, so your memory is vivid. Okay, it is very clear because you have captured the moment perfectly. And then it is idiosyncratic. Why it is idiosyncratic? Because it is only works on you. Okay, for example, when you suddenly reminded with the uh, with what happened during an earthquake then what you remember is only true for you for examples that you are reminded with the terror of the disaster right that's how it works okay it is vivid like capturing a moment perfectly but it is also idiosyncratic that means you are the only one who can feel your memory okay so two words it is vivid and it is idiosyncratic okay good Number two, how long do flashbulb memories last? How long does a flashbulb memories last? Okay, anyone? How long does a flashbulb memories last? Can anyone tell? How long? Five minutes, one hour, one day, one month, one year, one minute, one second? Come on, how long? According to the video, how long do a flashbulb memories last? How long is it? Dian? Anyone? Right, I think it lasts for like a few seconds, okay? Because if you if you are if you keep remembering about your flashbulb memories for too long and then you will lose consciousness, okay? You will uh, yeah, last a few moments, a few seconds, right? For example, so like when you are reminded of your of the earthquake, you don't keep you know seeing the visual over and over again, right? It only it only flashes uh, once for a few seconds, and then that's it. It's over, right? Okay, number three. What is the purpose of the amygdala? Okay, this is a, this is a rather difficult one. What is the purpose of the amygdala? Okay, what is it? What is the purpose of the amygdala? Yeah, no, the purpose of the amygdala. Amygdala, part of our brain. What is the purpose of the amygdala? In case of flashbulb memories. What is the purpose of the amygdala? Okay, uh, be careful because when we are talking about flashbulb memories, it doesn't only about memories, but it, it is also about the feeling. So, from that information, what is the purpose of the amygdala? Dian, can you tell? Uh, don't be afraid, just try. This is not a test, so it's okay to make mistakes. Okay, what is it? To feel fear, yes, to feel fear, uh, to it, amygdala is part of our brain where we, uh, where we can sense the fear, okay? And this fear, is a good, good answer, 
This fear help us combine our memory with our feeling. For example, you have a flashback memories about earthquake. And when the earthquake happened long time ago, it was only natural for you to feel fear. Okay, that's why the amygdala help you to store this memory as a flashback memories. A memories that can flashes up to your in on your mind any anywhere in the future okay right number four how many flashbulb memories do most people have okay how many flashbulb memories do most people have how many usually yeah 10 20 50 100 how many usually Less than 10? Yes, less than 10. Okay, if, you, if you're thinking about it, I don't think we have so much flash swap memories. I only have a few, like three or four. What about you? How many do you have? One, two, three? It's got to be less than 10. Okay. If you have more than 10, then you will have trouble going about your days. Okay. If you have more than 10, if you have like 15, 20, 30, or perhaps 100, everything will make you feel better, okay? Everything will make you, will make you feel fear, okay? Right, next one, number five. What sort of news or events is associated with a flashbulb memory, okay? What sort of news or event in associ is associated with a flashbulb memory? Okay, in the video, we are shown with the um, event of cele some celebrities' death, the death of uh, big political figures, the fall of Berlin Wall, or in Dian Perdana's case, the earthquake, right? So, from those examples, what... Uh, what kind of news is a flash bulb memory associated with? Okay. What is a flash bulb memory associated with? Okay. What kind of feeling or what kind of news or event that is associated with a flash bulb memory? Since we have seen um, the information, we have learned the information about that um, and disaster. I think the news related with tragedy, death, and disaster, okay? Right, number six. Why are deaths often the subject of flashbulb memories? Okay. Why are deaths often become the subject of flashbulb memories? Why deaths? Can someone tell me why deaths? Why that? Why? For example, the death of JFK, the death of John Lennon in Indonesia, perhaps the death of Gus Dur, okay, the death of Suharto, because that are most at the moment we fear. And not exactly, because I think the answer is because death, especially the unexpected ones, the sudden ones that happen on uh, political figures or famous musicians, means the end of an era for example the demise of our late uh, former president Suharto means that it is uh, the the end of the new order in indonesia right uh, the death of um, uh, big musicians means like the death of the 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 date the death of his fame or perhaps the death of the music genre itself okay right Okay, very good. Uh, so far, uh, Dian, do you have any questions? Okay, Dian, do you have any questions? Any more questions? Okay. If, okay, Dian, if you don't have any questions, okay. Right, then we're going to do part 4A. Okay, in part 4A, we're going to watch the same video again. The video about three different people telling about three different public events. I think we have new participants here. Let's just say hello to Brigitta Sarera. Brigitta, hello. Brigitta, can you, have, can you hear me? 
Hello, Brigitta. Okay, Brigitta and Dian, we're going to do part part 4A here. Okay. We have Sion, Anna, and Martin. Okay, I want you to remember the name. Sion, Anna, and Martin. The public event. Okay, we're going to talk about the public event that Sion, Anna, and Martin witnessed and how they associate or how they remember the event. Okay, so we're going to play a video. Okay, Brigitta, are you ready? Ready, Brigitta? Ready or not? Here I come. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. I've got a clear memory of when uh, Whitney Houston died because the funny thing was, was that I was listening to Whitney Houston the day before, which I never do. Um, and my girlfriend and I were listening to Whitney Houston and saying, actually, she's quite good. And then the next day I uh, went to the news agents and it was on the front of all the newspapers that she died. And it was really surprising in a strange coincidence that, that um, we'd listened to it the day before. One of the major events in German history was probably the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 on the 9th of November. Over the summer 89, uh, people started uh, demonstrating in Eastern Germany and Eastern Europe. And then uh, on the 9th of November, one of the, there was a press conference and one of the major politicians of the GDR said that um, the borders to Western Ber West Berlin and Western um, Germany would um, be open. And uh, one of the journalists asked, okay, when would that happen? Um, and this um, politician said, uh, he hesitated, looked at his notes, and then uh, he said, oh, today. People heard this on the news and went to the checkpoints and the borders were still closed, but then eventually the border officials opened them. And uh, a year later, uh, the uh, two Germanys uh, got um, unified. And as a, a little girl, I took this very seriously and crossed out all the borders in my school atlas. Something I remember very well was when the ash cloud caused um, air traffic chaos in Europe and people couldn't travel. And I was one of them. And um, it meant that I couldn't attend a conference, which potentially could have caused uh, big problems. And um, I was able to attend by webinar online, and it actually went down very well. Okay, now let's do part 4A, okay? Let's talk about Sion. Okay, what is the public event for Sion? What is the public event for Sion, Birgitta? What is the public event for Sion? Okay, I'll give you the clue. It's uh, the event is related with the death, death of a certain public figures. So whose death? Whose death that the, that Sion talked about? Whitney Houston, yes, Whitney Houston, very good. And how does Sion associate this event with him? How does he associate this event? How does Sion associate this event? Okay, uh, Brigitte, if you don't mind, you can turn on your mic if you, your mic if you want. Okay, instead of writing uh, on the chat, you can turn on your mic and talk to me if you want. So, how does Sion associate his death? Uh, how associate the Whitney Houston's death? His girlfriend, yes, his girlfriend. Or perhaps, Brigitta, can you give can you give me a more comprehensive or complete answer to support Dian's answer? 
Okay, Dian, uh, you did a good job. Yes, it is associated with his girlfriend. But in what way? In what way? In what way? Can anyone tell? Okay, let me tell you. So before uh, the uh, before one day before the death of Whitney Houston, uh, Sion's girlfriend, Sion's girlfriend, listened to a song by New uh, Whitney Houston, and the girlfriend said that song was very good. And then sudden in the in the next day, uh, Whitney Houston's died. Okay, that's how Sion associate the event with himself. Okay, next one, Anna. What is the most memorable public event for Anna? Okay, what is the answer for number two? What is the most memor memorable public event for Anna? The fall of Berlin Wall, yes, good. And how does Anna associate the event? How? How that does Anna associate the event? Fall of Berlin Wall. How does associate the event? Okay, can anyone tell me? How does Anna associate the event? Hello, Brigitta. Brigitta, in the end, can you tell me how does Anna associate the event? Okay, if uh, I think Anna associates this uh, the fall of Berlin Wall uh, with himself by remembering that the two countries found finally unites. Okay, there were, there was also demonstration everywhere, and everyone can get across the wall. Okay, that's how Anna associate the event with her. Okay, last one, Martin. Okay, what is the most memorable for Martin? Okay, let me give you some clue. The event um, that Martin experienced in the video is the one related with nature. Okay, what is the most memorable public event for Mar event for Martin? Not traffic chaos, but ash cloud. Okay, ash cloud, ash cloud, ash cloud, jadi awan debu, ash cloud, okay. Yes, ash cloud and Martin associate uh, it with traffic chaos, okay. He actually associate uh, the ash cloud with two things, okay. The first one is traffic, air traffic chaos, air traffic means the traffic on the air, traffic that belongs to the airplane, right. And one more thing, how does he associate this event? Okay, there is something else that he, he associate this event with. There's one more thing that Martin associate this event with. And what was it? What is it? Not only traffic chaos, okay, traffic chaos is true, but there's one more thing. That thing is he couldn't attend a webinar. Okay, sorry, he couldn't attend a seminar in Europe, okay. He couldn't fly because of the ash cloud. Therefore, uh, he couldn't attend the web webinar. Uh, thankfully, he can do it online. He could do it online. Okay? He did it online, so there is no problem. Okay, uh, that's about what, for a. Okay, so now let's talk about ourselves. Okay, uh, Brigitta, are you still here? Just to check, Brigitta. Yes, okay, Brig uh, Brigitte and Dian, let's talk about our flashback memories, okay, about, uh, about our past, okay. I will give you an example how to tell our uh, flashback memories, how to tell our memories, right? Like this one, uh, let me, wait, let me type in in the chat. Okay, right, that's me, Jojo, okay, right. Uh, I so said, when I remember about, I say, when I remember, uh, when I remember about, I say, Milan versus Liverpool, okay. 
sebentar when wait. when when someone mention anything about Sembilan Liverpool I was reminded with my grand with my late uncle and grandmother who were who were into soccer okay this this is my memory okay when someone mentioned anything about AC Milan versus Liverpool I was reminded with my late uncle and I, with my late uncle and grandmother who were into soccer. Oke, okay, jadi ketika ada yang mention soal Liverpool lawan AC Milan, saya tiba-tiba ingat uh, almarhum paman dan uh, nenek saya. Oke, okay, so what, what that's my memory. What about yours? Oke. Okay? Brigita Dian, I want you to type in your memory in the chat. Come on. I want you to find an event, oke, okay, and the memory that is associated with the events, oke? Okay? Just like mine. So the match between Liverpool and AC Milan in 2005 is associated with my memory with so uh, is associated with the memory with my late uncle and grandmother. Okay, what about yours? Kawan Brigita, Dian, you can type in your answer. Oke, okay, anyone? Come on, I'm waiting. For example, uh, when I visit this restaurant, I, I am suddenly reminded with my ex-girlfriend. Oke, okay, that's rather sad. Let's find something else. When I visited this, when I visited this temple, I am reminded with the memory with the time I used to spend with my father when I was a child. Okay, you can also do that. Okay, Brigitte and Dian, are you finished? Are you finished? Not yet. Okay, come on, because uh, the time is almost over. Okay, we only have one minute left, come on. Come on, we only have one minute left. One minute left. Come on. When an earthquake happened, I suddenly reminded with the earthquake when I was a kid. Yes. Okay, Dian Perdana, thank you very much. When an earthquake happened, I I am kurang M ya. I am suddenly reminded with the earthquake when I was a kid. Okay, good. Dian, what about Brigitte? Brigitte, what about Brigitte? Halo, Brigitte. Time is almost over. We'll all, we're almost done. Come on, Brigitte. Come on. Quick, quick. Come on. Come on. Dian is uh, Dian is finished. I am finished. What about I finished? Dian is finished. What about Brigitte? Come on. I'll give you 30 seconds. Come on, 30 seconds. Come on, Brigitte. You can do it. Just keep it short. Just keep it short. It doesn't have to be something very sad. As long as you uh, finish what I told you to do, then I'll be more than happy. It doesn't have to be anything sad. It can be anything. Okay. Right. Okay, 20 seconds. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Dian. People are waiting. Oh, no. Brigitte. Come on, Brigitte. When I watch a music concert in Singapore, I am reminded the moment of my first 
worst music concert. Okay, Brigitta, that's a. Uh, I'm so sorry for you. I think you got you got to be you, you got to have spent a lot of money coming to Singapore to watch a concert. But instead, what you got is a worst concert of your life. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I hope you learned uh, the lesson. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I hope you can apply the lesson in your life as well. Okay, thank you very much, and I will see you again the next one. Bye bye. We are